How many of you are excited when the word of God comes? I don't know about you, but every time the word of God comes to me, whether in a service like this or in my private time of prayer or studies, there is an excitement that it does. There's something it triggers inside of me. I used to think I was abnormal. But later on, I found other people like myself. So that means that if that doesn't happen to you, you are the one that is abnormal. You understand what I'm saying? Jeremiah said, I found your words and I ate them. And they were the joy and rejoicing. The word of God is the greatest treasure. That's all that he left us in right now. I want to show you something very powerful. All that God has left you. Your greatest asset as a believer is the word of God. I'm telling you. It's not the car that you can drive. Material, financial acquisitions. Thank God that those things are obtainable in Christ Jesus. Alright? And you see, for baby Christians, respectfully speaking, it is important for them to know that one of the reasons why Jesus died was for them to be freely given all of these things. For them to know that God has already supplied their needs in Christ Jesus. It is good and important for a baby Christian to know that. But as you mature in the faith, you begin to go into higher things. Higher dealings with God. And you begin to lay hold of the things that truly matter. The things that are important. You will realize that all of these material things that we can have on earth are but temporal. And then your soul begins to hunger for that which is eternal. To lay hold of that inheritance. All that God has left us, your inheritance in Christ, is this word. Everything that you will receive is in his word. Second Peter chapter 1 in verse 3. He says, according as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. Through the knowledge of him who has called us into glory and virtue. The word of God is your greatest asset. Don't allow the devil fool you. May there not be any time. Don't allow the devil fool you to any time to believe that aside from the word of God, there are things you need to get. No. Everything that you will receive in Christ Jesus and your conformity, your growth, conforming to the image of God, which is in Christ Jesus, is in the word of God. So you will rate your level of growth as a believer, your level of transformation, by how much knowledge and understanding of scripture you interface with part-time. The Bible calls it the true riches. Are you hearing me? Don't you allow the devil deceive you at any time. At any time. You know, most times the enemy plays this card with us that brings us to the flesh. When it seems like you are deprived of certain things you are believing God for, and it tarries, it doesn't seem like it's coming. The enemy begins to play us one kind of game that gets us trapped in the flesh, and we truly begin to esteem the riches of this life far better that the eternal word of God. The Bible says, the word of God liveth and abideth forever. It's the only thing that doesn't change, but it changes you. Are you hearing me? A few millions in your account, and then you realize that <laughs> you, you now know whether you truly love God or not. So you see that physical circumstances are temporal. They can subject you to changes. But you can never have enough of the word of God. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. The law is his word. And the Bible is calling it our inheritance. That's your inheritance. How would Jesus die and all that you will receive is a car and a house? And Of what use would that death be? If it was to lay hold on material and natural things. I'm, I'm healing somebody tonight though. So that your hunger, nothing would change your hunger and desire for the word of God. So no matter how much you have or how less in this life, your greatest treasure is his word. He said, he commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. 
when Abraham was to, you know, his last days on earth, the Bible says in Genesis 25 that he gave gifts to his other sons. You know, Abraham got married to another woman, all right, called Keturah. The Bible says he gave gifts. I think that's chapter 25, verse 5 and 6. In verse 5, he says he gave all to Isaac. All he had, he gave to Isaac. But in verse 6, he says he gave gifts to the other ones. So if he gave all to Isaac, where were those gifts? Simply speaking, he gave his material possessions to the other sons. You take car, you take moto, take house, take this one. Just take and go. But when he was Isaac, he said, I won't give you material things. There's something I can give you. The Bible called it the blessing. The blessing is the spoken, the prophetically spoken word of God to an individual. Every time a revelation of God's word comes to you, the blessing has come to you. So you have the ability to lay hold of your inheritance, which is eternal in Christ. It is that inheritance that can translate into all the physical things you, ha you can have. And even to spiritual resources. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even the anointing that God will release to you is in his word. The day you find it by revelation, you step into it. And the Bible says the gifts and callings of God are without. I want to raise by the help of God. A generation of Christians. Yes, they are wealthy. Yes, they are excellent. But those who truly love God. And who esteem the word of God a far greater treasure to their lives and their existence than any other thing. So every time you open your scriptures, every time you open the Bible, the scriptures, or every time you are listening to the word of God, you are interacting with your inheritance. So you listen with attention. What will make you what God wants you to be is not the things you have. No, those things are a derivative of what you have received from the world. You know, there are things you are not supposed to chase in this life. One of it is money. The Bible says money answereth all things. Bishop, if I call you answer, Bishop, sir. Money answereth. So there's something that can come on your life that will make money. So you don't live in depression simply because you don't have Naira and Kobo now. You don't have dollars. Where, where, where did you and last day church if only God can open your eyes to see the treasure that is in scripture for instance you can locate a promise in the word of God and the day you believe it it becomes yours forever he said Moses left us a law even the inheritance of the congregation whether they accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord or not, He has given it to them as an inheritance forever. So, begin to train your appetites. The Bible says, set your hearts or your minds on things above, not on things below. All of these things are only to make life comfortable for your physical body that is here because that's the house. And then so that you can have time to pursue the things that are greater. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Most of the people who chase money, they don't, they don't get it actually. Ask the poor. I said ask the poor because I'm not poor. By the grace of God, I can't be poor. I know too much of the world to be poor. Are you hearing me? I can't be poor. There's nothing you have physically that can intimidate. I can admire any most. I can admire what you have, <laughs> but it doesn't stand a chance with what I carry in my spirit. I'm talking about something that can change a generation, something that can light the lamp of a territory. How many billions can buy that one? You need to you need to place value on yourself and what you carry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't know why I'm going this route. Maybe God is addressing somebody. For one whole week you have been thinking because you didn't have any money in your account. And you are just frustrated or because you don't have a job and all of that. No, cheer up. There's something you have inside of you. 
If you think it's not important, why did the devil offer Jesus the whole world for that thing? You think about it. All these kingdoms and everything will I give to you. I just need one thing from you. If you think it's not important. Is that well said? Put, put your hands on your, on your belly. And I want you in one minute, talk to yourself and tell yourself how valuable you are because of the treasures of the word of God that is inside of your spirit. I won't tell you what to say. You say it to yourself. The Bible says what we have, the Bible calls it wisdom. He says it is more precious than rubies. He says it is greater than silver and gold. 